disastrous for Slaughterhouse. I think that's what you're saying. That's what our lovely analysts were saying and what we're all thinking. This could have been disastrous regardless of the map. Parabellum is a stacked team as they come, but you've taken them to their strongest map, potentially their strongest map in existence. You've got to be careful here. So it's going to start in the Operator Bands. This is where Slaughterhouse can maybe shake things up. SH are going to start things off with that Zero Band. So already coming hmm. out with some unique things here. I haven't seen a lot of Parabellum Villa. I know, Harrison, you could probably speak to this a little bit more. But I don't recall Zero as like a huge staple of that attack. Zero's not a huge staple for PB uh, in general really not an operator they uh, they run a whole lot but hey sh want to ban it he is a good operator on villa but i imagine pb are probably gonna be taking the nomad anyway thatcher default mira and valk the other ones being very default um but the bands in my mind at least uh, as you know sh do play the zero pb don't as much the ban phase i'm thinking leans a little bit more towards pb sides and a little bit more towards the attacking side as a whole mira and valkyrie you know are, are definitely a lot more influential than the zero is as there's no one that really takes up the same spots that a mira and a valkyrie does like you have you know nomad to zero and pb already going to be showing that they already they, they favor the nomad anyway however we do have an interesting pick on an avg defense we have not only defenders protect your the smoke by and the wamai jaeger combo we also have a Tachanka. Yeah, this is going to be fun to see here because Tachanka is one of those operators that, well, used to be just a meme and progressed from a meme to a bigger meme, but has now become debated whether you should bring him out in a comp setting. It's been very hard to find a team that uses him well. There's really been very few examples, even in Pro League, even at Invite. It is so hard. To use the Shumika launcher well, it requires a lot of precision. You have to prep exactly where you want to line those up and how you want to use those to maximum waste time. But you combine that with a C4. In this case, Wings has one in pocket. You combine that with the three toxic smokes that Marmalade has in her pocket, and you've got so much time waste when it comes down to that last second execute. So Parabellum suspecting you know we're gonna see a rather quick attack a rather decisive attack as long as they get to that point quickly they shouldn't have too much of a problem but a danger like in any round against any operator it's dangerous when you wait into the last few seconds to make your push but against this combination of plant denial and time waste parabellum will find themselves struggling if they allow the time to get away from them Looks like Tachanka is playing inside of Vault. So I know I have seen a Tachanka here before. I think Exile was actually running it uh, on Okami in the Orgless game, where they used the Tachanka to hold main stairs. So as main was being pushed from bottom up by the attack, they send the fires down. It's a pretty, you know, narrow uh, avenue. So it's easier for those fire for that fire to spread and completely deny that access to the attackers. But Afer's actually in Vault, so maybe he's using it to deny uh, the Vault Wall, maybe to deny books. Uh, either way, it's something different, something that we have not seen before. A minute 45 left in the round, and PB have already cleared Master. They are split up. Some pushing over towards Master and the north side of things, and you've got Kool-Aid hanging out on study, you know, opening the wall with his Hibana pellets, Spirits supporting him from the study window to hold his cross. And PB, they're starting to encroach on this site. They've got a lot of control. Sonar has set up one of his air jabs for, I believe, that's the Astro Stairs. But still, one of the things that I'm a little bit wary of is that if PB want to actually access study, there's still those main players and the main stairs shield that they have to worry about. Well, the beauty of this setup here is it may be designed to avoid having to push into study entirely. If you can get this bomb down behind the vault door, you can stick Kool-Aid on the study balk, stay on the repel, and because of the ex Kairos pellets you've already opened up, you can hold off that cross. Instead, Penguin's going to be going for the plant behind the maps table, the Shumika launcher covering off the default plant, and Spirits is going to get a double kill on the coverage, cutting down two players as they try to retake. Kool-Aid gets a third as Afer falls, and Psycho 
will get a trade, but it may be a little too late. It's Marmalade and Psycho against four, with only 30 seconds left on this defuse. Kool-Aid spots one, now whips out the bearing nine, lines up one, down Psycho, but cannot finish off Marmalade. However, going for this res may be too much time waste. She's gonna stick it, and she's gonna get it off, but now Penguin is sitting below, waiting for them to walk in. Eska and Penguin will line them up, and Parabellum take a clinical round one. Beautiful attack. Again, all their bases covered. Three players pushing by Skull, two pushing by Study, just to hold the cross. You have Kool-Aid pressuring into the site with those Hibana holes, Spirits covering his Study door. Spirits so is actually able to find a double kill from that position because he can peek not only the Study doorway to main, but also the holes made by Kool-Aid in the site. And I love the play by Penguin. Being backed up by his team, he sends the stuns in. It concusses the closest players to the plant spot and while tachanka we later found out his intention was to deny the skull doorway penguin ran in planted risk and no one from the defense knew exactly where it was either they didn't hear it go down Defenders or they assumed it was going vault either way there was nothing any of them had had to say about it plant went down defenders tried to rush through spirits cut them down and parabellum found all their frags still i believe three men alive towards the end of that round james kool-aid actually having three assists as well as a kill so he had something to say in four out of those five engagements as well and uh I really hope SH, I, I hope that's not shades of what's to come in this game because I would like this to be close, but that was an extremely convincing round from BB. Well, they'll be looking to continue that success, but this time, rather than heading towards the same bomb site, or rather what we consider the secondary bomb site, Trophy and Statuary, just one floor up, SH will be heading towards Kitchen and Dining. They're going to be bringing out the Pulse, as well as four different Nitro Cells in Pocket, so we can clearly see their intent. It's going to be quite a few explosives from below, guided by the intel from Afer. But this is something the Parabellum have seen countless times. Makes me think if they're going to go for something of a horizontal take, possibly here, as everyone is right now just engulfing this first floor, and Penguin, in fact, is going to make that entry. The first player they're going to have to deal with, though, is Wings. The Vigil playing over on the main staircase. Not sure if he's been droned out just yet. Of course, as the Vigil makes it a little bit more difficult to spot out his position. But Sonar is going to be pressuring from study to cut off these rotations and do some some drone work themselves as well. That drone's gonna peek around the corner and spot out wings, so the Vigil will be smart to rotate around and head back towards the safety of their teammates. Kool-Aid and Penguin will now actually begin to pressure this manually rather than just droning it out, making sure that Wings doesn't rotate back because as they get their first points of entry into the building, looks like they just wanna pressure this first floor and make sure nobody can flank around the other side. They're taking a decent bit to move through study though i mean there's it's been about a minute 20 and all they've done is set up some air jabs they haven't started pushing their way into 90 just yet they're droning it out just to make sure and but actually spirits Attackers spirits is already in books now there is a pulse down below so they likely know he's here that's going to be the c4 from kilo and only landing chip damage on the iana but at least the defense is aware of his presence so spirits isn't gonna be able to surprise anybody with this early aggression peeking around he does spot the cap can for a second but it's actually kool-aid with the first pick onto marmalade before he's refragged by aper that pulse coming up from the basement to make his presence known. So it's a four versus four, but you have lost your Hibana, which, I mean, depending on the take, could be a pretty big deal or not. You don't necessarily need hard breach on Villa, but opening up that laundry wall does certainly make establishing that crossfire in sight a little bit more manageable. I like what PB are doing so, right, uh, so far here. We see Eska pushing over from laundry. There was a call that, wait a minute, there's somebody on the bottom floor. We know where the cap can is. That was Kilo fighting over with um, Kool-Aid just a couple of, or Spirits rather, a couple of moments ago here. So Eska on that push will actually get felled by Psycho. Sonar is very quick to get that trade. That kill from above. So they'll go one for one there. And now the pressure will continue to build here in Memorial. Afer though gets another, and that's gonna be onto Spirits. Quickly answered again by Sonar, getting another trade on the round. The 2v2 and now the plant going down because both SH defenders are caught out and not in Ooh. the objective. A C4 is actually going to miss just barely as Penguin now returns to the defuse. But as Wings gets one, now Penguin has to do all the work himself. Not gonna take the defuse instead, going for the frag, but Afer wins it out in the 1v1 one and sh barely survive but they will take the round 
Wow, that was a close one. You actually heard when the C4 was ripped, Penguin came off the plant to shoot it and ended up landing the shot. But uh, PB, I like their push up until they lost Kool-Aid and everything started to kind of separate. You had Penguin coming in from Memo. Sonar was upstairs. Eska was pushing Laundry and Spirits was still hanging out by Mudroom. So while Parabellum had a lot of ground, they didn't have a lot of refragability. So when Spirits gets swung by the Pulse, because, you know, it's a Pulse, they have perfect info on him, Eska gets traded out. Sonar had not pushed actually up the stairs to clear Master. If Sonar had gone up a little bit sooner, Eska would have survived, they would have had a player laundry, and it would have been, you know, more even man count. But they lose Eska, Sonar trades it to two versus two. I... Sonar knows that there's two players over towards China. Penguin gets off the plant to shoot the C4. There's nothing that the defenders have to counter the plant other than just to swing. But Sonar loses his fight in Memo. Uh, I can't really fault him for the positioning. Because, um, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious somebody from the defense is going to wrap around. Sonar just happened to lose his 1v1. Penguin got the trade, yes. But honestly, I think he kind of whiffed on that pulse a little bit. Both he and Afer took a tremendously long time to kill each other. That 1v1 could have gone either way. And it just happened to not go in Penguin's favor. So that was an extremely close round for both teams. One fight just goes one way or another. And it could have been a completely different result. Yeah, not the result Parabellum wanted, but now that they're headed back to an AVG attack, they can continue the success they had last time. This actually gives me the point to uh, talk a little bit more about the play that we saw Kool-Aid do with those x Kairos pellets last time over on that study balcony. And the beauty of that play is that you never even have to enter into study. Of course, the first step is dealing with this Electro Claw. That's going to be Penguin's job here, looking to that exact hiding spot where he knows it's going to be... But Psycho uh, got a little bit distracted, tried to jog across the room, and Penguin is quick to punish that. So while the Electro Claw will remain alive for now, Psycho will not. So I guess job well done. You found the opening pick. Good pings here from Kool-Aid, somehow getting this drone in the middle of the objective, and that's going to allow them to actually get that off the wall. But Afer will get the trade, not only for the teammate, but for the Electro Claw. However, that does mean that Kool-Aid should be able to get that wall open. They'll have to swing in on the study bout to do so, as the pressure now from Spirits will join his teammate on the study room itself here. But if Kool-Aid gets this off, that's going to mean he's got these just about the crouch height hole onto the vault door. Afer won't be able to rotate around safely, barely able to shoot back because of the height of that hole. And we can see Sonar and Eska, they're positioned to push on in just like last time. Here comes the Tachanka fire once again. The one thing I'm going to be worried about for PB is we saw how they used those uh, Zofia stuns. Those stuns were influential in allowing them to push through and start that plant attempt. And now they don't have that. They don't have the man advantage and they don't have the utility. Now, luckily, they won't be really missing the explosives because there's only one shield and it's stuck over towards main. And they do have the study wall open. So once again, Kool-Aid and Spirits are going to be extremely important in not letting the defenders gain too much ground back once the plant attempt from Sonar starts to come through. There's 45 seconds left. Afer only has four shots up with the Chanka, but Wings is going to deal some good damage to Sonar as the plant starts to go down once again behind Risk. But there's the smoke, babes. This is what we were missing last time, but Kool-Aid finds the pick onto the K. The smoke not doing enough damage to kill, but Afer finds his second and a third as the fire finishes off Sonar. It's Eska and Kool-Aid now alone Wow, okay, Afer destroys Kool-Aid for his fourth, and the player downstairs finds the final frag. SH, take round number three, and take a one-round lead. Now that, Harrison, is how you deny the plant. That's what we were missing in round one, and that's what SH just did beautifully in round three. I mean, Parabellum just, again, they lost the round, but they played really well in, up until, you know, they tried to get the bomb down, but they were ready to go ready to plant with about 60 seconds left. I mean, they had all their bases covered. They had the wall open. You had a player on the study window. You had two players outside of that uh, map's doorway. You could just run on in and plant. But that is why SH won the round. They denied that 
just by slowly but surely putting down all the utility they need first it was the fire one shumika launcher slowly at a time little by little chipping away at the clock that was something that we saw parabellum just sitting there and waiting for their time to sprint on in but then comes the even more potent toxic smokes that marmalade had she did not miss the throw last time she didn't even attempt to throw but this time the comms were there you saw how when running in sonar was spotted out by the players sitting on that uh, games room bar spotted out they knew they should get those toxic babes thrown they denied the plant once they denied it twice the fire got a kill and you had a player sitting below to provide all the intel you needed that was textbook use of all of that utility something that they couldn't do in the first round but quickly solving those problems and parabellum despite the strength we know they have on aviator and games they're not going to be able to take it the second time Right now, it seems to be the A for show for SH. Huge reason why they are currently up 2-1. He has seven kills in the first three rounds. At least on the analyst desk pointed out is you can't just rely on A for to carry you to victory, but at least right now, he's doing a pretty damn good job. Once again, it's going to be a study side clear from PB, though instead of dining, it's going to be on Trophy. SH, they have some reinforcements and some utility dedicated to that side of the map, but they will very quickly fall off. Only dealing, or sorry, only wasting about 45 to 50 seconds of PB's time. They've now droned in. They know everything is clear. They can start opening up the walls just for ease of rotatability and continuing their clear. Something they're going to have to worry about, though, are these downstairs players. There's an Aruni who could be coming up for a flank or covering his team for a late C4 from Kilo should he want to drop down. They have done a great job of forcing SH back. That's one thing they've done a stellar job of. At least SH... Power to them as well. They haven't forced trying to hold this south side. They immediately rotated out of Aviator and Games the moment we saw Parabellum work their way onto the study balcony itself. Eska missing a couple of key shots there. But right now, this is just a typical trophy and statuary attack. You've cleared your way up through the south. That means it's time to rotate people around towards Master. That's exactly where Kool-Aid is now positioned. And it's time to start taking gunfights. It's time to start pressuring the objective itself. Spirits is going to do that with a nade, but it's not going to connect because an ADS burned that right on out. Or maybe that's two nades that were now thrown down range. Second one will go off and do some chip damage to Aver, but nothing potent is now Spirits will actually do it the manual way with the gun up and in the middle of the site. A couple more nades will rain on through, but this time over from that master wall, those are gonna be from Eska and they will not connect either. Right now it's a back and forth game on this site, but no progress made by Parabellum. SH just sitting and waiting for the fights to come. Wings will take the first one and win it out. Spirits down very early on, and you've still got the downstairs players of Kilo, who could play for that C4 should he need to. In fact, he'll actually just get a kill before Kool-Aid trades out wings, but Penguin is now down inside the site. He's traded out once again by Kool-Aid. It's a three versus two, and Kool-Aid seems to want to get this plant down behind the bomb chassis. It's going to be up to Eska to cover, but Kool-Aid's going to continue pushing on through over towards the Astro split. He'll get the plant down right by the corner, but there's that C4 from below. Kilo goes huge, and Kool-Aid can't find his pick an Astro. SH take round number four it's three defenses a perfect rotation after pb's initial round win sh looking good right now that is well played yet again i love their passive play on that roam that extension it didn't really affect them all that much even though they put some manpower off the site something i highlighted during the round but once they pulled back to the site they didn't just sit in a corner and wait. They were they, they were doing things actively the entire time to make sure they had their bases covered. I really love the play from Kilo running below and pre-placing that C4, just waiting to use it late in the round when they knew that there could be some sort of player just running in. The last hope of Parabellum was really to just sprint in into uh, astronomy and just take those fights, and it just was not allowed to happen. A great C4 kill. It left Kool-Aid alone, and with 10 HP, a diffuser against three, not much you can do there. An excellent hold, another great use of utility, and just use of the map control, forcing Parabellum to really, really work their hardest as they go on that take. So much so, the Parabellum have taken that tactical time out. They really need to recover after three rounds that we thought they had a shot in, but they just haven't been able to take. Yeah, it seems like 
while they may have an okay start to the round, it's that mid to late round where SH really clutches up, figures out what they need to do, and PB, their response is rather weak. Other than that one win on AVG, we haven't really seen anything else convincing from them. And SH have certainly woken up. They look miles better than they did against both Orglis and Lenny. They're taking the fight to what uh, who a lot of people consider to be the best team currently in Challenger League. Of course, we still have two more rounds of this half to go. Whether or not Parabellum are able to tie it up or secure a 4-2 remains to be seen as they will now attack Dining once again against a very similar operator lineup. Once again, you'll probably have Afer down in the basement scanning with that cardiac sensor, making sure no one pushing horizontally like Spirits catches his teammates off guard. You have plenty of C4 as well to work with. And PB, uh, if there's one change I would make to their attack, would once again not be nearly as spread out they just kind of got picked off one by one and the refrags were only there for maybe the first two it's also been in a couple of these early gunfights right they're just maybe they're getting initial headway into the map and they're getting their steps done but losing that first player we saw it in round two and three especially losing that first player has really thrown their attacks kind of in through a loop and and they haven't quite been able to recover yes they've all they've done they've made progress without that player they've lost early or they'll get a couple of kills anyway but it just feels that this efficiency and this really really good looking attack will come to a grinding halt when something goes wrong and and that's not what you want to see here especially against a team like sh who as they've shown now for three different rounds they are going to capitalize every time you make the slightest misstep but the focus of this round it's going to be on afer for a good bit he's playing pretty aggressively but with a heartbeat sensor so has all that intel at his fingertips over there in living room and library but as uh, we see Parabellum try to drone him out and trying to gain some intel of their own, Afer will use that opportunity to rotate away and make it back towards the bomb site here. So Parabellum, they've made good progress, and this horizontal clear is well underway. It was pretty similar to what they did last time. Uh, they didn't really have anyone go upstairs with the exception of Sonar holding flank. So, you know, SH and PB, actually, they're probably well more than ready to deal with the opposing strategy once again you have psycho up top this is where eska died to he died to the laundry hash and here comes sonar once again watching the flank upstairs setting up air jabs making the rotations for the defense harder although he'll whiff that one so minus one air jab i would imagine that would have probably gone on the statue door a little bit unfortunate there for Sonar, but it's probably not the end of the world. Not as long as he has someone supporting him. But once again, Afer, the opening pick going the way of SH. That is Spirits dead. One of the most important operators in clearing those Aruni gates, activated. gathering info, clearing utility with the nades in the Gone Six. No longer at your disposal. Penguin is the next one in. He'll find the pick into Memo. Down goes that pulse. That's a good kill. A lot of info now off the board for the defense as well. And he'll find a second on the Marmalade hiding inside of Tetris. So all of a sudden, the man count has now swung in PB's favor. Four versus three. They lead by one. Psycho drops Laundry now to try and cover through the site. He's got eyes on the rotate. He'll tag up Kool-Aid and finally find the kill through the wall. Evening up the man count and finding the second as well. Eska's looking up sky high. Wings still above. Has holes through the floor. Sonar gets one refrag inside of China. Is it going to be enough? He's only got 15 seconds to play with. Both players are starting to barrel down and he's taking damage from above. He doesn't even know where and SH take round number five. Yeah, planting right underneath that vertical hole. The same hole actually that one teammate died to. So a little communication issue there with uh, exactly where you want to get that diffuser down, of course, in that clutch situation. No easy spot for you, for sure. Um, but a uh, interesting shot or at least a good try to say the least. But to say that, to be saying good try Parabellum at this point in the uh, in the map is not what I don't think, I don't think what we expected here, Harrison. I mean, this is what we thought of Parabellum's one of their strongest maps, Parabellum themselves saying that. And SH are handing it to them right now on defense. And this is after SH got it handed to them last week by Lenny GG. This is mm. a Defenders very impressive turnaround from in one Harrison. week's time. And on a map that you'd really think SH have a disadvantage, they are playing phenomenally well, covering all of their bases. And in that last round especially, Parabellum had the edge going into those closing seconds. But 
you still had Psycho in play. He just, he got two kills. You still had Wings upstairs. He got two kills. You have these two players in power positions. You're allowing their guns to shine and it is working really well. They're up three rounds now, a four to one lead. Going into this last round of defense, if Parabellum can't take one more attacking round, they're in for a troubling half on the other side. Yeah, maybe we were hyping up their villa too much from what we were told. This scoreline is what I expected from PB, but reversed. I expected them to be in the lead by three rounds, but SH have been playing tremendously well, not just with the frags, not just in the killing department, but with their utility as well. They have been playing on top of stuff like the Tachanka, on top of their intel, like the Pulse, extremely well. And PB... They just haven't been taking the necessary steps to clear. It seems like they want to take the easy route. And in taking that direct route to site, something, some one little aspect of the defense is left unchecked. And it ends up really biting the attack in the backside. Penguin going down below, clearing an ADS. Actually, I believe takes a bullet in the back through the wall from that main stairs player. But two of these SH players are far and away from the site. Psycho is hovering over towards the red stairs. And I believe we saw another player over towards the basement or so? No, okay, I believe he's actually come back towards site. So it's just Psycho on the roam, holding bottom red, trying to contest these downstairs clearing players, but those players have left. The Psycho will be left uh, pretty much just to his own devices. Right now, Parabellum haven't, haven't changed up anything from their previous efforts at attacking AB in games. One thing they do have to be aware of though, is this flank, Psycho. Pops his head up and takes a kill. That is a great way to start for SH. And there goes your Nomad. So you place down a couple of air jabs. So sort of Sonar doing their job already. And if you're going to lose anybody when you still have to get this bomb down, I'd say that's not the worst player to lose. So you're still in a good spot here. You've got everyone in the right spots in terms of preparing for this plant. Spirits on this study. Wow. 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 Great shot there from Wings. Now it's going to be up to the three remaining players. Wings is going to wait to see four quickly and then get Woo! a beautiful shot through the wall onto Kool-Aid. A double kill there. And now with all the time in their hands, SH can do just about whatever they want. Psycho on another swing will take care of Penguin quickly, leaving Eska alone against five. 50 seconds remain. Very little utility. One drone in pocket. That nade will get something, but four more players need to be found. That's 10 seconds per kill, and a diffuser needs to be recovered and put on the ground. And he's working with little to no info. He had one ping onto the Chanka, but that seems to be it. That drone, or SH probably tipped off to the fact that there was a drone in sight. Eska will just swing in, and Wings will find his third kill of the round. SH are just running a clinic on the PB attacks right now. And that's definitely a statement I did not expect to have come out of my mouth going into this map. That round, PB started with the downstairs clear, decided that wasn't what they wanted to do, or I guess satisfied with the control they took. They started to rotate over back towards their master clear, which is pretty default, but that flank from Psycho, not being pinned down earlier on in the round, ended up killing Sonar. There's less being dedicated towards Skull. Wings pops up and just absolutely demolishes both your study players, I mean, Wings hit some incredible to shots to kill Kool-Aid and Spirits. And from there in a 2v5, I mean, PB left with very little control. One person trying to push books while the other is downstairs. You're completely disconnected. No chance for a refrag. Penguin couldn't even get one before he died. And it's a 5-1 defensive half for SH. Uh, on a map that is... Really uh, considered to be, you know, a 4-2 defensive half, maybe even 3-3. And with one of the attacking bands only being a zero, that's really tough for PB. I mean, maybe this just happens to be a defensive-sided villa, but SH were playing absolutely lights out. And if they continue that on their attack, they could actually take down, again, what a lot of people consider to be the best team in CL rather quickly. I mean, you highlighted the bands, and I, I think that's a perfect point to make here because it's not like you've taken the Habana off the board and Parabellum are forced to go with a style that they maybe don't usually prefer, right? They don't have to bring the Thermite or the Ace to get it done. They're just... It looks like they're playing their game, and they're playing it well. 
And it looks like SH are just playing it better. And that's what's so great about this map. I don't feel like this is a game of mistakes right now. It is a game of just a great team and a better team. And surprisingly so, SH right now is that better team. We'll see how Parabellum can answer, and they'll start off round number seven with something in their favor, at least. That's going to remove the Yana. Psycho dropped, and a great kill to open things up. Spirits took a little bit of damage in that engagement, but is very fine to continue in this round. Penguin, wow, the timing of that repel. Marmalade just narrowly avoiding Penguin on that swing. In fact, Penguin jumps out, but can't quite get the kill. <laughs> so Penguin clearly eager to swing the momentum back in Parabellum's favor, but that's not going to be enough to do it. It's going to have to be a couple more kills and a couple of decisive rounds going their way, because right now, even in a disadvantaged position, SH, they've got all the momentum. They've got all the progress they need to get this one going. They're definitely slower on their attacks than Parabellum were until in terms of actually getting up to this top floor, clearing up through main stairs but spirits full blind forced to tuck tail and run behind this deployable shield will continue to take damage as wings now finishes that kill for good wings earlier as well dealing a lot of damage to sonar through the floor the smoke is gonna have to be careful where he plays and he'll get finished off by kilo kool-aid looks the wrong way but still lives before he's traded out by marmalade it's penguin with another i don't know what the hell just happened on main stairs but it works out in pb's favor as the aruni finds the final kill it was a whole cluster of players just moving up and down the stairs spirits dies first sonar moves out he gets traded off penguin comes in to support kool-aid i believe the study player died to the aruni kool-aid turned around and killed the sledge penguin was able to fall off i don't even remember what happened that was such a mess but ended up giving pb the win that was a much needed one as they hopefully start to close the gap that round, that, that one really felt exactly. different compared to all of the rounds prior. I mean, yeah, every every other round, seven rounds or six rounds in a row of just pretty textbook surgical precision level siege, right? And and that one was a little bit different, right? It was a messy main stairs clear Parabellum. They invested more than enough manpower into that position, but they thought, wait a minute, why not just pour everything at this if, if 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 sh are gonna just full send this in terms of utility and manpower let's uh let's full send it right back and even though there were mostly trades going back and forth it was in fact parabellum who came out victorious so that is the start of a possible comeback but they still have a three round deficit to make up and uh, a very hungry and strong attacking sh team to fend off. They're gonna head over to Trophy and Statuary for their second defense, not opting to go downstairs like SH did in their second attempt. And uh, right now we'll see SH, looks like they're gonna be uh, rolling through a pretty typical south to north clear, working their way through Aviator and games first, and a couple of players to stand in their way. Esther will back off of AVG. Something that I would like to highlight as well that may have turned the round in favor of PB early on is the entry. After round number one, PB got two more entry kills. They got the first three in a row. Not sure they only won one round out of those three, but the next three in a row were found by SH. And now on their defensive half, PB start off with that opening kill and they will carry that momentum onto round eight as well. Penguin finding a very early one on the Kilo, your Sledge player. Now while Sledge himself may not be the most important op on a trophy attack, it's still a set of nades off the board, which are always a help. And Penguin's able to get away, not necessarily scot-free as he's lost a lot of life, but still he's alive. And that's what counts. And unfortunately, Psycho was not able to catch Eska's rotate downstairs. So still, PB will be up that man. And they've still got those downstairs players with C4s that SH is going to have to clear out with only a minute 30 to do so. Well, that opening kill is also given, you know, Parabellum a little bit more of that edge that we were missing in this first half. They're getting a little bit more aggressive. We saw another swing there onto the Zofia of Wings, who took a bit of chip damage from that. But... Again, right now, Parabellum have turned this into a waiting game of their own. They've left the first floor and left these extended roaming positions that we saw Penguin get a kill from, and they've retreated to the objective itself. Ooh. A wall bang there, totally incidental shot, will be enough to actually down Penguin. I'm pretty sure that was uh, Psyka who got that shot. And um, 
Penguin will have to have to get rest at some point. Looks like Eska is in a position to crawl around and actually get that done as uh, Penguin was able to drop down the hatch to safety. So he'll actually be back in this fight with more HP than he had a moment ago. But Sonar has taken a good bit of damage and here comes the flood into the site. However, Spirits is standing in their way, lighting them up and cutting them down. Kool-Aid with two at the end. And that is a clinical closure for Parabellum. SH just kind of walk in and die. Uh, so both these teams yet to really crack the code on attack, it seems. That trophy round, not only was Penguin playing very aggressive over by Living to get that first kill, he was able to fall back, and sure, he got downed, but he was able to be rezzed by Eska. As soon as Penguin dropped and Eska got the res, though, SH decided, hey, let's flood. But the flood was really just from Statue and Boar, I guess? Spirits was able to get the first kill, Sonar followed up with another, and because Kool-Aid was never cleared out, and no one from SH ever pressured Master at all, it seemed, he was free to just swing both the players pushing through the statue door. Usually on that attack, there's a reason why we see someone at least pressure, you know, have, have some kind of shadow pressure on Master. Like, usually it's the Hibana, so she can open up that crossfire into the wall, but that just that simply never happened, probably because the Cade and the Electric Claw never been cleared, yada yada yada. Anyway, PB taking uh, two pretty convincing defenses in a row. Like I said, starting to close the gap, but you know, in addition to the first round they won, they needed to take another perfect three site rotation. And they just took the first. Next is Dining. They will likely go AVG fourth, and they'll need to win both of these next sites if they want to prevent SH from guaranteeing a point. Yeah, you forget. I mean, even though it's not match point, it is like. Any point here for SH guarantees them that point, guarantees Parabellum not able to advance their standing. I know as, as much as they'd like here in Group A. So things are very much on the line for Parabellum as they head to the tertiary objective, kitchen and dining now. We'll have the pulse in play, as we saw from Slaughterhouse or SH. And uh, Eska is going to be taking up that role and three C4s to follow. So a very similar strategy that SH brought out on their side. And we are also seeing Eska play in a similar position, not in the site itself, looking at the ceiling above, but instead over in living and library, holding down a little bit of this extension and holding off the vertical or rather the horizontal clear. He'll be able to hold off the pressure for about 60 seconds, but as he rotates away, 50 HP worth of damage will fall as well away as well. So with about a minute gone, SH have made pretty good progress. They've cleared out that extended hold over on the side of living room here, and they're working their way through this first floor. Pretty interesting that both teams opt for the majority horizontal clear rather than going upstairs, which is uh, traditionally the way teams like to clear this. PB knowing that it's largely horizontal, Kool-Aid will go ahead and electroclaw the memo door so the attackers can't get an easy crossfire through. Eska getting away with his life was huge, so he can support, perhaps, Spirits and Penguin upstairs feeding them info or feeding his site players info capcan trap being shot penguin does love his capcan both teams in this match have actually now played the operator early earlier i believe it was um i think it was vladder who donned the russian operator but after sh grabbed that horizontal they haven't really done much but drone for the past minute they're droning upstairs. They confirm that, yes, there are indeed players up here. Spirits will finally get spotted out in bathroom, but where's the pinch? There's one coming Astro side. Spirits will take some damage through the master wall, and as he gets distracted, in comes the swing from Marmalade. So, first pick going the way of SH, and Wings follows it up on the sonar. No answer just yet for PB, but as I say that, Kool-Aid finds at least one kill for his team. Three versus four, still one man up. Make it two once again as Afer finds a kill. It's just Eska and Penguin. Two versus four, 25 seconds to hold on. They've got one C4 in pocket. Eska's gonna let it rip. He'll down off Kilo, but is that gonna be enough? The sledge seemingly irrecoverable considering the amount of time left for SH to push it in, but no, they'll actually pick him up. Kool-Aid holding the angle. He'll lose his fight to Marmalade. 10 seconds left for Eska. He can't land the necessary shots. They know exactly where he is. Penguin actually gets a Capkin trap from the grave, but Marmalade's getting this plant down. Eska's hit by an air jab. He'll have to forfeit that control, and now it's a post plant. SH can start to peel away play their post-plant positions, and Eska armed with only a UMP and below 50 HP, this is going to be a near impossible task for him.
Yeah, because of that air jab detonation, his position should be known, or at least suspected. But it looks like Eska had the perfect opportunity to get that kill onto Afer. And actually, you know, with Psycho at low HP, all it takes is one well-placed headshot and one body shot to get the job done here. Unfortunately, Eska doesn't have a lot of HP either, or pretty much any intel of the position of these attackers, and Psycho will make the round certain with a nice kill to finish it. Off. So SH have indeed guaranteed themselves at least one point out of the matchup with one of the best teams in Challenger League at the moment. But SH proving that that statement may not be correct after today. A good top clear from SH really catching Spirits out. You can tell Spirits was not prepared for the sheer amount of players being thrown at him. I think eventually there were there were three people pressuring him. One bathroom, one through the master wall, and one coming by the master door. And four people upstairs in total hunting down this Jaeger. After they got that pick, Afer found another. Sure, there was one refrag, but... Or sorry, I think it was Wings found another. PV refrag, and then Afer refrag again. And SH, after they cleared the top floor, I mean, it was, sure, it was late, but it gave them the necessary control and kills they needed. I mean, two versus four, Penguin whiffing his shots on China, leaving Eska all alone. Sure, Eska tried his best, but he really had, despite being the pulse, he didn't have time to bring out the cardiac sensor. He made the long rotate upstairs and back down. That burned a lot of time. He had no info to play off of. I mean, there's only so much you can ask of him in that situation, but SH are now leading six to three. PB once again, starting on AVG, need a perfect sight rotation. They cannot make any mistakes if they want this to go to overtime. They do have, you know, two victories under their belt going for them on defense, and they were on the two sites that we'll see from them next. First, it was AVG, then it was Trophy and Statuary, so it's not out of the question that they pull this back, but it is still going to require a kill, or a win, excuse me, on that final site, the kitchen and dining, the one that eluded them in that previous round. But last time we were here, it was a pretty successful performance. They held down the site pretty much just by holding down uh, the main stairs position. And that is uh, likely what we'll see the initial focus on this time as well. Wings instead is going to circumvent that, heading straight for the red stairs. And Eska, without that intel and caught a little bit unaware, will be the first player to fall. So on match point, SH are in a man advantage. Sonar, away from the site, is downstairs going for a little bit of a flank on wings here. And a player who seems to have no idea that the flank is inbound. Thankfully, at least just timing and sheer luck is going to let Wings escape from that position. And now, instead, Wings will challenge on the other staircase that matters to this site. The main stairs, where Spirits is holding prone. I'm surprised uh, Wings didn't know about Sonar downstairs, considering he had shot the drone. But Afer is just going to swing in, case in hand, and give his life up to Kool-Aid. He only landed one shot under the body of the Maestro. Now you've lost that control inside of Study, and the Maestro's going to post up in the corner. Kool-Aid actually drops Art! Oh my god, Kool-Aid with four! As he just drops the hatch, he's looking for the ace. Wings is lit up, Bailiff out, he'll finally die. Kool-Aid's reign of terror is over, but Spirits is not far behind. What a heads-up play from the Maestro, dropping the hatch, destroying every single player in his path, and that'll give PB their fourth round. Well, that's one way to take a round. Well played. Sometimes you just need one player to step up, sense the right situation at the right time, and, well, Kool-Aid did exactly that. I mean, the Alda in hand, you just gotta hold left-click, and you get the job done. And that's that's what he did. Great job from Kool-Aid. Great situational awareness, knowing that that hatch is not only open, but that it's likely going to be exposed because the entire, the only call out you're getting from your team is they're pushing main stairs. I'm challenging one on main stairs. They're tossing utility towards the main stairs. Great decision to make that one happen. A great use of intel. And that is just team play showing you how an individual play can, can really shine through with proper coordination. So although that didn't make a ton of sense, the round goes the way of Parabellum regardless, and they will once again continue that AVG success they had in the previous attempt. And now they're going to go back to Trophy and Statuary, a site that also went their way. 
All they've got to do is continue that rhythm, continue the dominance of that previous round, and we could see this one tie up and get all the way to overtime. But SH, if they've got anything to say about it, they're going to finish this one off sooner. The concern I have right now for PV is not necessarily this site. This site they took handedly last time. It's dining. If they go dining again, there's going to have to be some major adjustments to how they play it if they want this to go to OT, because last time, SH, after they cleared that top floor, once again, they're pushed on the site. Their execute was clinical. Of course, now we got to get their trophy first. SH could very well end it here in 7-4. And that would be a... Uh, Quite the statement, especially for the new pickup of Wings, who is currently 11 and 8. The newest pickup for SH coming mid-season. He had, uh, I'll say it, a very poor performance against Lenny last week, but now he's turning up and the drone coming in, finding Kool-Aid. Despite seeing it, I believe Kool-Aid's still going to hit the sprint. And he'll get felled by Psycho very early on. That's an important operator. The Pulse now off the board, as well as PB's top frag. Again, on match point. SH with the opening pick. This time, they've just got to continue that momentum and play the trade game from here on out. Last time, maybe they got a little bit complacent. They played a little bit individually, and that's what cost them that advantage and eventually the round. We'll see how they can pull this one back, or rather, Parabellum pull this one back, and we can see how Sonar is going to line up this, just trying to play vertical, hoping that somebody walks into his crosshair, but that is not going to happen. Wings right now, busy pressuring vertical, joining Kilo in that endeavor. Actually, the first time we're seeing the Ash in play at all today, which is good to see here, but just relegated to flank watch right now. Just waiting for Parabellum to act. They suspect that maybe they'll see a flank. They'll see some sort of Hail Mary type play to bring Parabellum back in this round. But right now, Parabellum are going to remain relatively patient. But they're still going to make sure to take gunfights when they can. Penguin doing that in bathroom. Now Eska, another bold play. Rotating down the main stairs to pressure on these two players positioned below. Whether or not SH have info is a different story. Another drone will come in. Kilo likely to spot out Eska soon, but no. He just goes up the red stairs, so Eska may just remain misdroned. He can hear the Zofia opening the barricade behind him. That'll prompt Eska, though, to walk up the stairs. The drone will confirm his position. Penguin, who is playing very aggressive, fishing for a pick to try and put his team back in the favorable odds, will take some damage. Here's Eska. He'll win his fight against Wings, but there's the refrag attempt from the Ash. Kilo finds the immediate trade. So still, a one-man advantage here for SH. 34 seconds for them to play with Spirit. Still holds on to Astro stairs, but as he looks away, Psycho moves in and finds his teammate in Astro. He can't fight the three players pressuring him. He only finds one, and Penguin can't do anything. SH take Villa away from PB. They said it was their most comfortable bath, but clearly SH is better. It's a 7-4 scoreline. What a statement from SH.